Hey guys, check this out. I've always kind of wanted to try this. And what I have here is a big QSC power amplifier. So this is a PLX3102. It puts out about 3,000, just over 3,000 watts in four ohms mono bridged. And I do have it in bridged right now. So basically just hooks up both inputs to each other. And I have it hooked up to a light bulb. So this light bulb is not actually plugged into the wall or anything. It's plugged into a power amplifier. And there's a rather terrible mixer. It's a Behringer, but it doesn't matter here. Rather terrible mixer on top that's getting a signal from this laptop. And all it's doing is playing a 60 hertz sine wave. And so that 60 hertz sine wave comes out of the laptop, goes into the mixer to give me level control, and then into the amplifier. And the amplifier is outputting a 60 hertz sine wave, which is just the same as what you would get from the wall. And what's really cool is if I slide over here and change the what would be volume, the light bulb gets brighter or dimmer. So the reason this works is because this amplifier is actually able to put out upwards of 150 volts across its terminals when it's in bridged mono mode. So that's a lot more than your typical home amplifier that might be able to only to do say 20 or 30 or 40 volts. And that's actually enough then that it can fully light up this light bulb. Okay, so what I've done is I've hooked up my oscilloscope to both the walls. So I have a line splitter and one of the probes on a line out of the leads to my voltmeter. The voltmeter shows, as you would expect, just over 120 volts, since that's the line voltage of the wall. And it shows as well the trace on here of the actual AC power. So I'm going to turn off the light bulb for a second here. And that's just the AC voltage out of the wall. You can see in the top corner there, it's just right on 60 hertz. And it's a very normal sine wave. And I will bring up the level on the uh, sine wave I'm playing from the computer. The light bulb will start to light up here in a second. Once I get the level high enough, you can see it started to light up. And there on the screen in the yellow trace, you can see the sine wave that's coming from the computer. So it's at a lower amplitude. So the vertical is the amplitude. So it's not as high of a voltage right now. It's probably somewhere in the 50 volt range at the moment, but it is still making the same sine wave pattern. And you will notice that it's actually offset, but that's expected. So there's no synchronization between the line voltage out of the wall and the sine wave that's playing through the amplifier. But that's actually just as a side note, that's why when you do a back fed solar setup onto the grid, that you actually have to get synchronized before they'll let you hook up because these two you can see actually it's drifting a little bit they're not perfectly in sync and if that was the case when you tried to back feed the grid it wouldn't work but i can turn up the volume here and you'll see both the light bulb gets brighter but also the amplitude of the signal on the oscilloscope gets higher as well with the yellow trace that is the Sorry, the reason it went out there is I'm just playing a sine wave in Audacity and it just cut out or just came to the end of the track. I only had five minutes, so I'm just going to start that again. But I'll bring that back up here and you can see as I bring the amplitude up, we get closer and closer to the actual same voltage as the power out of the wall. Maybe you can see that better if I come to the other side here, but much closer. So we're just over 100 volts now with the output from the amplifier. So another interesting thing we can do is play different frequencies. So I have a 10 hertz tone playing right now, and I've changed the scaling on the oscilloscope, but you can see a fairly low voltage um, 10 hertz signal there, and the light bulb blinks. So this is pretty interesting. The same thing is happening with your light bulb at 60 hertz. It's just so fast, similar to like the frame rate of a movie, that you can't see the individual pulses, but it is actually happening. Let me slow it down even a bit more and maybe we can see it more pronounced. All right, I've slowed it down to two hertz now and now we can actually see the individual pulses as the sine wave goes up and down. And this is what is happening just really, really fast when it's at 60 hertz as opposed to two hertz. And now what's really cool is because it is an amplifier and it's used to playing music, we can play an audio track through the laptop and see it in the light bulb. Mostly what you'll see is the bass notes, so it won't pick up the higher frequency, but the lower frequency, um, things down in the, say, 30 to 70 hertz range, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower, will actually show up on the light bulb. So let me hit play here, and we can see now that the light bulb is blinking with the music. I think 
at least I can tell there's a little bit of a synchronization or a little bit of a delay here. And I don't know if that's in just my setup and the latency between playing through the laptop speakers and the light bulb actually illuminating, but that's the music playing through a light bulb. Pretty darn cool. It's also possible to see this on the scope. So here's that signal, the same signal that's going to the light bulb right now, but on the oscilloscope screen. I'm just going to make a little bit of adjustment so we can narrow down the voltage a bit and also just spread this out a bit as well. But there's the audio signal that is actually going to the light bulb right now. One unrelated to the light bulb, but something we can actually try here without damaging anything is actually visualizing what clipping is. So you can see those clip lights come on and everybody's seen those, the red lights that flash on amplifiers and stereo equipment. So what does that actually look like? So I'm going to really turn it up high here and we can see then on the oscilloscope that the tops of these peaks are all kind of chopped off a little bit. And that's what clipping is, is the peak of the waveform is actually chopped off or flattened because there's not enough output from the amplifier to actually produce that signal. And of course, in this case, the light bulb is very bright. And I've gone a step further here and I've turned the clip limiters off on this amp. And now we can really see it. So with the clip limiters on, it didn't do much um, to the waveform, but here with the clip limiter off, where it's not trying to smooth out those peaks, you can see it almost turns into a square wave. And of course, when the speaker gets this, it basically comes to the peak of its movement and then stops. It's almost like a DC signal at that point. And speakers, hopefully this will refocus here, speakers rely on their movement to stay cool. And when they don't move and are at a very high amplitude, that's what actually causes a lot of extra heat buildup and what can damage a speaker. So if you ever wanted to see a visual representation of clipping, this is it. But anyway, that's it for today. It was just a quick video and wanted to share what I was experimenting with in the garage today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you're not already subscribed, please consider it. And as always, thanks for watching.